How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boilai Hobby Time. I was once again at my local hobby store and I bought this Cassian and K2SO box from Star Wars Legion. I also bought a box with Jin Erso and a box of Stormtroopers while I was at it. The prompt for my Patreon art challenge this month was favorite movie moments and because I saw all three of these kids together at the store, decided to recreate something from one of my favorite Star Wars movies. Cassian and K2 came on a sprue together, and they seem to be made from a different plastic than the other Star Wars Legion miniatures that I used in this build. I thought about recreating the moment at the end of the movie where K2SO defends the door, but I've done that before on a larger scale, so this time around I decided to recreate a different shot that included both Jin and Cassian. I've had this question for a while, but why is it so easy to knock out a stormtrooper with a blunt object? Shouldn't their helmets be able to take impacts from things like a baton? I don't know the answer to that, but if you do, please let me know in the comments. Once all three of my heroes had been assembled, I put together the box of stormtroopers. And speaking of plastic, if any of you are thinking of starting a little plastic bag collection, these Star Wars Legion sets would be a good place to start. They even include a larger plastic bag so you can keep all your little plastic bags in one place. For the base, I'm using a sheet of MDF and I glued some pieces of quarter inch wood around the edge to give it some height. And then put on the little figures to plan the layout. In this shot, K2SO catches a live grenade and he tosses it over his shoulder and takes out a little group of advancing stormtroopers. For the walls of these buildings, I'm using some XPS insulation foam that I cut off camera on my hot wire table. I watched the scene multiple times and I paused it at a few different angles to try and recreate the alleyway that this scene takes place in. I eyeballed everything so it's not exactly perfect, but I think I captured the overall shape and scale pretty well. I used my hot wire table like a scroll saw to cut out this archway. I continued cutting and adding parts to the walls, and I definitely could have done most of this with a sharp knife, but the hot wire table made easy work of those straight lines and right angles. I found some generic sci-fi terrain pieces at the hobby store, and one of them, I think it was a vending machine, I used to make an impression of a door. I also cut some partial arches to imply full arches, just out of frame. I glued all of the foam together with foam safe super glue and CA Accelerator. This is kind of a killer combo, definitely a game changer in terms of the speed of working with foam, but it is expensive. After the structures were mostly done, I carved in some battle damage using my X-Acto knife. Probably went a little heavy on the battle damage, but it's a fun process, so it's hard not to go a little bit overboard. I also made some places where the plaster had come off the walls by scoring a line and making an impression along the line and then cutting some brick lines to complete the look. I then started gluing the wall pieces to the base and adding some greeblies as well. A few are from that generic sci-fi battle pack that I mentioned earlier, and a few others are from the official Star Wars Legion Objective Scatter Terrain box. I made a little awning to go over one of the doors by using a wooden dowel and some fabric as well as a little piece of plastic that would suspend the fabric away from the door. I used Mod Podge to make sure it was sturdy. I added a few more details, including a bench that sits against this little wall section right here. There is a stormtrooper who is knocked out, sitting on this bench the whole fight sequence. So I made that bench from balsa wood sticks, put that in place, and I also Customize one of the extra stormtroopers to be the stormtrooper that was knocked out on the bench. Also customized two of the other stormtroopers to look like they had been smacked in the head with Jin Erso's stick. And then I topped off the structures with more foam and I added the last of the greeblies and the details. After that, it was time to coat the thing in a protective layer of paint and Mod Podge. I didn't use any plaster this time because I wanted to retain as much of the detail as possible that I had carved into the foam. Once that was coated thoroughly, I set it aside to dry. And once it was dry, I performed a little bit of movie magic to apply a Zenithal highlight.
If you're unfamiliar, that means I sprayed it black first and then with a lighter color from above to create some natural looking shading. I also took the figures outside once they were on painting bases and I primed them as well. Like many cities in Star Wars, Jetta City is the color of sand. I painted the base using mostly an airbrush and I tried to lightly add the color over top of the existing shading with the goal to let the values show through. And I think it worked out pretty well. After I painted the walls, I also painted the ground to look a similar sandy hue. I painted the finer details with a brush, including this wall art, the bench, the awning, and the washes over the exposed brick. I then blasted on a few other colors to tie everything together and give it a more unified look. I then stuck down some sand, which I probably should have done earlier, using some watered down glue and isopropyl alcohol. Next, I moved on to the stormtroopers. I primed them all white, so that all I had to do was go back and paint on a few black details. I also went over top with a light dusting of that sandy color to tie them into the setting. And I moved on to our heroes. First up is Jin Urso. Jin is the daughter of Galen Urso, the guy best known for doing a real solid for the Star Wars franchise by designing the Death Star with its iconic fatal weakness. Jin is a rebel at heart and usually likes to fly solo, but does enjoy quality time on the beach with her friends. Next up is Cassian Ander a cold-blooded spy and saboteur for the Rebellion. His show is coming out as I'm making this video, so I don't want to spoil too much of his background, but he will do whatever it takes to complete a mission, and he also enjoys quality time on the beach with his friends. And last but not least is K2SO, or K2 for short. K2 is a KX series security droid reprogrammed from his default Imperial settings to helpful ally of the Rebellion, helping Cassian in his pursuit of sabotaging the Empire. K2 stands at 2.16 meters tall and doesn't enjoy time on the beach with his friends. After all of the painting, it was time to put all the little figures in place. I would usually paint all of the sides with black 3.0, but I wanted to clean up the front just a little more. So I used some styrene, cut that out to the shape, I painted that black and I glued it on. I painted the rest of the sides with black 3.0 and before painting, I cleaned up my palette. After I had painted the other three sides of the diorama, I called it good. Before moving on to my final shots, here are all of the submissions from my patrons for the monthly art challenge. Excellent work, and a huge thank you to everyone who participated in that last month. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You guys are the best. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll see you next time.